fruit loops of the mind. I tried to stay in my resurrection, in that free and light place that I had journeyed to after integrating my pain through my writing, crying, feeling, and the yoga sun salutations. I didn't do such a good job. Part of the reason was because he never responded to my book. I mean, I wrote a whole book and dedicated a huge chunk of it to him for crying out loud. I got nothing. How could he not respond? Is he that numb and shut down? I obsessed day and night. The silence hurt. I was definitely attached to a response and had expectation. How could I not? I honestly thought I was going to end this book with our reconciliation. Even though I transformed the pain and released the darkness harboring within me, I traveled back into the mind loops of the past. I spent moments, days, weeks, months reliving everything over and over in my mind. It was mental and emotional self-torture. The Vrittis are coming, the Vrittis are coming, I chanted to myself. Vrittis means thought in Sanskrit. When I get stuck in these mind loops, I try to use humor to let them go. If that doesn't work, I bang my head against the wall. No, I don't, but I imagine doing it. That's how obsessed my mind gets. Heal me of my fear-based thoughts. Fear is just love distorted. Me. Instead of banging my head against the wall, I called upon my angels. Since my fears ran deep and were etched into my subconscious from birth and subsequently every chapter of my life, I definitely needed extra help. Because of the trauma I experienced in my childhood and in my adult life, my mind liked to focus and obsess on something, even if it wasn't positive. It's a way of control. There came a point in my journey that I had done the work. I was healed. Now I just needed to maintain the state of being, staying in my free heart and not journey back into the darkness with my thoughts. The angel that is always with me and helps me get out of my fearful thinking patterns is Archangel Michael. Every day I would call out in frustration and despair. Archangel Michael, please help me release my fearful thoughts and regain my emotional footing back again. Thank you. Even though they don't need it, angels love to be thanked and feel appreciated. I would take a deep breath because that is how divine thought gets in and old negative thoughts get out. And in a minute or so, I would feel a shift from within and feel centered and grounded again. It worked just like that. The mantra, please heal me of my fear-based thoughts from A Course in Miracles was the only thing I needed at this point. Bleeding heart. I even heard my angel Michael in a meditation say, he no longer serves you. After I asked for guidance, I have come to learn we have many soulmates. Some are meant for a lifetime and some are meant for a time in our life. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. Sorry, a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. I had to accept that all the growth that I could achieve with the soul was achieved. Now it was time to let go and move on. I didn't accept it though. I wasn't ready to let go yet. I really thought this was going to be a temporary breakup and we would get a second chance, that I would conclude my book with a happy ending between us. I kept visualizing our reunion, jumping into his arms and giving him my love, free and unhindered, a new woman, happy and healed. Because I had to find peace and closure on my own without getting the opportunity to talk with him face to face and heart to heart, it created more unrest and unsettledness. 
Coming to grips with the fact that he is not choosing to come back and give us a second chance was another loss I had to sit with and brought me back into the questioning and despair. We were soulmates, and when you reunite with one, it is a special and blessed occurrence. However, free will, the gift we were given on the earth plane, is always at play with the power to make conscious or unconscious choices. One soul can choose to say no. Not everybody is ready for love. I waited and hoped for months, then decided I had to let go and move on. This mental and emotional torture was draining me and toxic to my soul. It's not easy to let him go. When I give my heart to someone, I give 110% loyal and faithful to the end. As time goes on, the old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, soothes me. But how much stronger do I have to be? I'm tired of being so strong. I just want to be loved. Even though I brought many wounds into the relationship, I also brought so much positive energy, love, and beauty to his life and his family. I gave so much of me. I'm starting to feel stronger. As I realize I can't take all the blame for this, I forgive myself as I move forward. One thing I learned from my relationship with soulmate number three, my former husband from Bob, the astrologer, was that when men, I'm saying men because it's more their pattern, When men shut down and walk away, they leave you holding their emotional baggage. So in addition to your feelings and emotions that you are trying to process, you have theirs as well. Men often complain that women are crazy. Sometimes the reason women act so crazy is because of just this. We are left with the unresolved emotional energy of two people. Then men wonder why we have a breakdown and act irrational. That was a huge aha moment for me. I used to think I was effing crazy, but now I understand why I become so intense. I realized that soulmate number four, my beloved's new identity, had just as much to contribute to the demise of the relationship. He said he loved me and had the choice to come back and work things out, but he chose to shut down and walk away. That part I cannot control. He chose to focus on my weaknesses and not my strengths, my openness and willingness to grow and change. I remember him looking at me in the eye one night, sitting in his kitchen, asserting that I must have faith in our relationship. In the end, it was he that lacked the faith. Now the roles have been reversed. He is now my jailer if I choose to allow that. But I know in my heart that I have to move on. I cannot be shackled by anyone. I have seen the light, I have healed my heart, and I will never go through that pain again because I face it once and for all. If he chooses to keep seeing me in the past with all my wounds and traumas and not whole and healed as I am now, then he isn't the beloved for me. One of my wise spiritual friends said once that relationships are like a game of catch. You throw the ball to someone, they catch it and throw it back. You catch it and throw it back to them and so on. There is a balance and equal give and take. What I realized was happening with my dilemma, I was throwing the ball to soulmate number four and he was just letting it drop. Forget about catching it or throwing it back, he just let it fall to the wayside. The ball was my love and that's not the ball game I want to play anymore. Stuck again. After five months of dreadful silence, he texts me, saying he has been thinking about me for the last few days and asked if I wanted to spend the day and night on his boat on Fire Island to watch the lunar eclipse. I was shocked. I had been waiting for this moment for months. I felt like a weight was released from me as I thought maybe he still cares, maybe he's still in it, and maybe he still loves me. Maybe the miracle I was praying for had finally come true. For me, there is nothing that could be more perfect in my heart than to be at my favorite place in the world on the ocean watching the moon he knows me so well i was so excited but immediately my higher self kicked in and said don't get too excited don't set yourself up to be hurt again that voice within was warning me thank goddess for my higher self because that is exactly what happened even though at this point i wasn't sure if i wanted to get back with him Being a peacemaker at heart, I was longing to see if we could come to a place of healing and harmony between us. I still loved him and was desperate to speak my peace and to understand what happened. 
how we spiraled from this beautiful, awesome connection and relationship to nothing. I cleared my work calendar for the next two days, including the fundraiser I was supposed to participate in and reschedule my clients. The last thing I heard from him was a text that the weather was looking iffy and he would let me know. Well, he never let me know. He left me hanging. It wasn't about me or us after all. It was about the weather and the stinking moon. I was crushed. My spirit sank back down. How could he do this to me? I obsessed day and night. Doesn't he realize how he just crushed my heart again? How could he not? Yet I knew it happened for a reason. It was like God and my higher self knew in my optimistic, mushy heart, I was still holding on to a shred of hope that we could reconcile. After this, there was no chance. This was not the relationship for me anymore, and I needed to be banged over the head to see it clearly for what it was. Still, I felt like I had to work on forgiving him all over again and letting go. I went right back down into the mental and emotional self-torture. I was back in the questioning, back in the contemplative mind back in the darkness.